What has been the biggest legal win for the Adele industry since you got involved with the FSC? I think that the biggest win and and really was sort of Prop 60. And I think that um, you know, the FSC had had victories before. It had gone, it's gone to the Supreme Court and it's won. It had a battle over um, essentially sort of barely legal content or what we used to term barely legal mm-hmm. content, um, which, you know, was basically saying that if, if something looked like it was, they were underage, um, you know, if it, was the, if it didn't matter if you're 24 in pigtails, if, if a prosecutor thought that you looked too young, you would be brought up on, you know, s- sex abuse charges, essentially sort of, you know, child pornography. Which is right? insane. It's in it's, Because that's such a, like, a, I mean, you let one person decide that. I mean, it's the same with obscenity, right? Like, yeah. it's just like this kind of arbitrary decision by what one person, de- I mean, then that's such a slippery slope. And it allows you to harass the business, right? Yeah. So I think that anytime that you're talking about, you know, abuse material or people who are underage or, or, or things like that, you know, you're dealing with, you want a clear line, right? If somebody is 18 or they're not 18, right? Yeah. They can consent or they can't consent. Once you start having, you know, conservative prosecutors say, well, I don't like the way that that person looks, you know, or, or, you know, then, and there's no sort of standard, well, then they can go after anybody. It doesn't matter if, you know, there are performers who look young, but are 28, 29, 30. Um, that's not the same, you know, and, and the, pro- the, the the penalties for child pornography are incredibly Hot, right, it's like twenty five years in jail. So being per, per, per uh, image, image, yes. and I know that because in the Tracy, Tracy Lord scandal, your parents, yes. when my parents were facing jail, that was like the one thing that my father was. You know, that's why they destroyed all their content because yeah. they had like hundreds and hundreds of pictures of her yeah. and frames of a of a video, and yeah. just like absolutely terrified. Yeah, this industry has always, I mean, in my experience, and I'm sure yours as well, has always been really, really locked down when it comes to age, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's no joking, there's no pushing, right? Like, someone may look younger, uh, you know, have a younger look, but we make sure that they are of legal age, that they are consenting, that this is sort of how it goes. And I think that, um, so FSC had sort of so there was a law that was passed that said, you know, if you look underage, it's the same thing as if you're actually underage. Um, nobody wanted to fight it. FSC fought it. We went to the Supreme Court. We won. It was a victory, not just for us, but also for Hollywood, because the way that the law was written, it was if you appeared to be underage or if you appeared to be having sex. So in that regard, you know, whether it's Romeo and Juliet or Euphoria or something like that, if it looks like it is a minor having sex, even if you're not seeing the explicit sex, you could be brought up on child porn charges. Yeah. And so obviously they weren't probably going to go after Hollywood. They were going to go after us. Yeah. Um, but we fight those victories. So that was probably the biggest FSC victory for us. Prop 60. Again, it was when we started out on that, it was a ballot issue that would mandate condoms in adult films. And if you didn't, you know, if you didn't use a condom, whether you were making your own content or whether you were, you know, shooting for a studio, the enforcement was that someone who watched that video could sue you, mm-hmm. right? Yes, so someone watches your video, you've got a content on a clip site um, or a fan site, they see that you're not using a condom, they're going to sue you because it's they think that it's a bad message, right? That was sort of what it was. Um, that means that they get to drag you into court, right? That means that you get harassed. And, and performers saw this immediately and said, first of all, my body, my choice, right? There's reasons when I want to use a condom. There's reasons that I don't. Um, I'm tested every two weeks. I make these decisions about myself. And two, I don't want my stalkers coming in and having an excuse to say, oh, you didn't do this. Well, I'm going to drag you into court. Yeah. Right. I've got. There's a lot of those. So many girls have like really crazy stalker fans yeah. that will use. I mean, so many girls like deal with uh, catfishing, right? And then these these fans get catfished by these fake accounts. It happens to me too. I had some guy reach out to me the other day, said that he gave some fake Holly $7,000. And I said I was going to move him out to my farm in Texas. I was like, I don't have a farm yeah, in Texas. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he was just like, oh my God, I'm handicapped. I can't afford this. I'm like, why the fuck did you send the money oh then? God. Yeah. Like you obviously never spoke to me. Like it was yeah. just, you know? So, but anyways, I I have a friend um, who has this this one guy who is convinced that it's her fault that he felt for a scammer. And he's like trying to drag her into court. Yeah. He's like harassing her because he sent money to a fake version of her, which is not her fault. 
No. It's just and it's just crazy. And and one thing I do actually want to say about um the condom law, a great um representation of of why it was like not an ideal law whatsoever was actually when I was uh, hosting a show for Playboy TV called Adult Film School. And so the whole premise of that was we took real couples that had been together for a long time and they wanted to make a professional sex tape. But because of the condom law and because it was Playboy and they were like very much about, you know, playing by the rules, I had to take these couples who'd been married for 25 years, had three kids. Not only do I have to now put them like, in front of a crew on a porn set and have sex, which is like intimidating for everyone. I have to make them wear condoms. Yeah. These like real life couples who don't work because they're a couple. It was crazy. The fail rate was like 90%. Yeah. It was so bad. It, it was so bad that the second season, we took it to Austin. Yeah. Because of that condom law. So we took that work out of California. Because if you were not shooting in California, you didn't have to follow these regulations. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's exactly when you have people who come outside the industry, they have these ideas as how the industry works and, and what should be done. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the insight that that people who actually work on set do. And they don't want to listen to people who work on set because they think that, again, we're dumb, we're criminal, like we're manipulated or, right. or whatever it is. And as a result, they draft legislation and they draft regulation that just doesn't work because it's based on fictions, right? It's based on myths. It's based on things that they've seen on an HBO show, but not based on what the reality of everyone's lives and, and, and jobs are.